Here in uh, Unit 1, Lesson 6, we are now looking at solving quadratic equations, uh, which again, this takes you back to Algebra 1, which is kind of the theme of our first unit here uh, that we're going to be testing on is some, some algebra concepts. And so solving quadratics is something you did back as early as Algebra 1. A couple reminders, uh, when you solve a quadratic equation like this, uh, that can be the same thing as finding the zeros, finding the roots, the solutions, all those things mean the same thing. So just keep that in mind. Here is one method of solving, and that is by factoring. So uh, if we, whenever you factor or use the quadratic formula, uh, important step on that is to always make sure everything is on one side of the equation so that it equals zero on the other side before you try to factor it or use the formula or anything else. So right here in this case, we got everything onto one side. If we put those into factored form, so again, you're looking for numbers that would multiply to be three and add to be four. And that's where we came up with the plus one and the plus three. So those are our factors. Uh, if I set each factor separately equal to zero and solve for X, these are the two solutions we would come out with. Uh, same method over here by factoring. In this case, though, we are just going to factor out a greatest common factor. So we're going to pull out a three X for this. Um, and again, keep in mind, you got two factors. This is a factor because it has an X in it. This is also a factor because it has an X in it. The X's are what give you your answer. So uh, in this case, um, if I set 3X equal to 0 and solve it, well, I'm going to come out with X equals 0 as my first solution. And if I set X minus 3 equal to 0 and solve him, I get positive 3 as my second solution. Typically, anytime you solve a quadratic equation, you do come out with two solutions. There are some special cases for other scenarios, but typically you can expect two solutions from that. Uh, just keep in mind, and I know this sounds simple, but this is important. Uh, your solutions always come from your X's. So wherever you have an X, that is considered a factor. Um, and that's what you set equal to zero to get your solution. If I did not factor out an X right here and all I had was a number like just three, I would not get an answer from that. So sometimes I've seen people do that. They pull out a three and they set three equal to zero and come up with an answer of zero out of that. So uh, make sure that you only get solutions from your X's wherever they are at. So uh, that's a method for solving, that is factoring. The other method that you need to know is your quadratic formula and you do not get the quadratic formula within your formula packet. So this is one you need to know. Uh, let me write this down for you so you can include this in your notes. Uh, but for the quadratic formula, this is what we are using for this particular problem. So you can put this into your notes. So right here we get negative B plus or minus big square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And so that's your quadratic formula. Make sure that you uh, have that thing memorized. You will need that at times for problems within your assignments and tests. So be familiar with it. Uh, the only note I would give you on this is the order of operations on this that you always want to make sure you follow are do the radical first. So you got to do the, the B squared minus 4AC first um, and get that number. That's called your discriminant. So get the discriminant first. Then you deal with him. And then you divide last. Dividing by 2a is always the last thing that you do. So make sure that you follow that order of operations. All right. So for this particular problem, if you plug in the numbers into the formula that I just wrote down, this is what it would look like. So again, I would always start with the discriminant, the number under the radical. So I had 1 squared minus 4ac. Uh, keep in mind, you, do got, you got two negatives here. So I know it's going to be one plus whatever this number is. So I'm going to be adding because of the double negative. So if I did one plus 16, I get 17 for my discriminant. Uh, this cannot be simplified any farther. So at this right here at this point, this you are done for this problem. Um, if the directions say to round your answer to three sig figs, well, then you would need to go further and uh, plug this into your calculator to get decimals out of that. So you would have to do 1 plus the square root of 17 and then divide that by 2 to get your first answer. Then you would have to do 1 minus the square root of 17, divide that by 2 
and get your second answer. So that's only if the, if the question says specifically round your answer to three sig figs. You will have a question on our first test that asks you to do that. So really important that you know how to do that in your calculator. So you might want to practice that one and give it a try. Let me just show you what those answers would be if you did it correctly. Uh, just in case you want to try this one for practice. And I'll just go full screen for you so you can see it. But if I was going to do 1 plus the square root of 17 divided by 2. So you either have to do this in two steps or you got to put the top in parentheses. But I'm going to do parentheses 1 plus the square root of 17. And then I'm going to close that off. So that's my numerator. Divide that by 2. And if we were going to round that off to 3 sig figs, we have 2.56. And then if I was going to get my second answer and do 1 minus the square root of 17, and then I'm going to hit over to, to shut off the radical, and then close the parenthesis, divide that by 2, and here's my other answer, negative 1.56. You will have these on your test, so really important that you know how to use your calculator to get those decimal answers like you're seeing right there. So let me take you back here. I got a side note for you because people often do this wrong. If I were solving a quadratic by using this formula, and let's just say you got to this stage right here. So I, I simplified everything that I could. I got down to this stage right here. How do I simplify this properly? When you simplify from here, because 4 does divide into both of these numbers, that's all you have to do. So I'm doing 4 into 4. And that gives me a 1. The reason I'm pointing this out is oftentimes people will cross out these 4s and say that their answer is 8 root 5. Can't do that. You, you can't only reduce one of these. Um, you have to reduce both. And when we divide, we're dividing. We're not eliminating. We Oftentimes we cross these out and say that they're gone. But they're not gone. They're just reducing. So I'm doing 4 into 4 once. I'm doing 4 into 8 twice and this is the proper way of writing that answer right there so you got to make sure that you simplify correctly um, again if you take a look at this one oftentimes people will just cross out the twos and say that their answer is rad six can't do that right you can only divide if two the, if this number divides into both parts of the numerator two does go into two obviously but i cannot divide two into this there's nothing for it to go into I can't mix a non-radical with a radical, so this guy is done. This is as far as he will go. So make sure that when you simplify, that you simplify this appropriately. There is a way to use your graphing display calculator to solve for these. The one downside is that your calculator will not give you answers in radical form. Uh, these graphing display calculators don't do radical form, they do decimals. So let me show you how to use this. If, if the problem did ask you for exact answers like this, then you can't use a calculator. You got to stick with the quadratic formula in order to get this exact answer. But if you, if you are going to go decimals, uh, here's another way that you can do it in your calculator to get the decimal answers. So we're going to practice it on this one right here. So the x squared plus 4x plus 3. Here's how we're going to do that. If I go to my calculator, let me clear those out, go into your graph, clear those out. So the equation that we were just looking at was x squared plus 4x plus 3. So I'm going to type that in here. I have the x squared plus 4x plus 3. And so I'm just typing the equation in there. Keep in mind that this was set equal to 0. So uh, we're, we're essentially replacing 0 with y in order to do this. So when I go ahead and hit graph, you can see the parabola that this creates. Your two, your two solutions, remember if we replaced y with 0, then we are looking for the zeros or the x-intercepts of this graph. And so those are where we're going to get the two solutions from. Uh, so if we go under calc, and again, I am finding the zeros of this graph. So choose zero. Remember, there are two of them. And you have to do them each individually. I have one right about there. I have another one 
right about there. So let me just start with the first one. Because there are two solutions, your calculator needs to know which one do you want to find first. And so it's going to ask you to set up a couple of boundaries. It's going to say, what about a left boundary? So I'm going to go a little bit to the left of my first answer and hit enter. And I'm going to give it a left boundary. Now it asks me for a right boundary. So I got to go a little to the right of my answer and hit enter. So you can see the lines that popped up with the arrows. What this is telling your calculator is that the zero you are finding right now is between those two lines. And so it's going to give you the zero that we have right here that's between those two lines. So when it says guess, just hit enter. And there you go. It gives you the first zero, which is negative three. That's your first solution. And now if you want to find your second solution, again, go back under calc, choose zero. Let me go over to where my other answer is, right about there. And it's going to say, give me a left boundary. So I've got to go left a little bit and hit enter. The right boundary, so go right a little bit and hit enter. And so now we've just established, we just told the calculator that my answer is between those two boundary lines. So it's going to give me the zero right here when I hit enter. There we go, negative one is my other solution. Um, do not write this as negative one, zero. <laughs> you, you're not solving for y, we're solving for x. So you would just write negative one as your answer, but that's how you get your second solution. There is another cool feature uh, of your calculator under the apps button that you might want to take advantage of. If you have it, only the newer calculators would have this in it. But if you go under apps, apps for those of you taking the IB test, you are now allowed to use this on your IB test. So that's why I'm showing you. But if you go under apps, Under apps, you will have uh, the application right here, which is PolySimul2. So if you hit enter on that, um, we're doing PolyRootFinder, which is the first one. So we hit enter. Um, the order is the exponent, the, the highest exponent within the problem. Since this problem is x squared, we highlight the 2. And everything else is going to remain the same. Um, the, the items that you see here correspond to the button below them. So if I want to hit next, I hit the button below, which is graph. This takes me to the next page. And I literally just type in the problem that we are doing. So the one that we were just showing was x squared plus 4x plus 3. So 1x squared plus 4x oops, plus three enter so I just put in the equation that we were just just doing right here where it says solve if I hit the button below it for solve it gives me my solutions which are negative one and negative three and so uh, that's something you're allowed to do um, you do have the option for converting from fractions to decimals if you need to take advantage of that the one thing this calculator won't do is give you an answer in radical form so if the directions do ask you for an answer in radical form, uh, then you do need to use the quadratic formula, not the calculator. Also, if the directions on the test, or I should say, when the directions on the test tell you a specific way of solving, like use the quadratic formula, you got to do that. You can't just say, oh, I just use the poly root finder and just give me solutions. If the directions specifically to say, show your work, or they say, show how to get these answers, and they, they Somewhere in the directions, they tell you a specific way of showing work. You got to make sure that you do that in order to get all the credit for this problem. On the IB test, uh, if the directions tell you something specific, like show how to get these answers, and they and you only list the answers, they won't give you any points at all. So it's really important that when the directions specifically tell you to do something, that you follow those directions. That's really important. Uh, but if the if they don't, if they just say to come up with solutions then you can use any method you want for getting these answers. Um, so just make sure that you follow directions for whatever is being asked of you to do.